Welcome to The Horror Hangout, a podcast where two bearded film fans watch the best and worst horror movies of all time and talk about them. My name is Ben Errington and I'm joined by my regular co-host, Mr... Andy. Oh, sorry. Oh, Andy Conjurit. Sorry, I've, I've ruined Whoa, it. Oh, my I thought God. I've obviously evolved beyond having a title. Um, no, just Andy Conjurit Turner. Please, Mr. is my father's name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. I, I, we kind of... Schrodinger's podcast this week we have two possibly three hosts if whether Looper can make it or not he's stuck at work right now and the show must go on but he may be able to join us a bit later yeah and I, what, I guess what would be fun about listening to this podcast is the anticipation of possibly a third host joining at some point he's going to smash through the wall at the Kool-Aid man <laughs> I'd love that I'd love it if he just Turned that out of the blue and just went, oh, this film shit, I hate it. I've had a fucking enough. You get a nurse of uh, Planet Terror, spoilers for the movie if you haven't read the title, Planet Terror this week. Um, <laughs> but yeah. He turns up and he just says, right, I'm going to throw some chaos at this podcast episode, you know. I'm not even, I ain't even got an A to, an a to F review, you know. I'm just going to start He's swearing. rated in stars. He's rated in stars, the crazy guy not even out uh, of, not even out of five 18 out of what who knows <laughs> who bloody knows mate 18 out of summer you work it out obviously always a bit strange when it's not the three of us or when you know the dynamic of the podcast shifts a little bit but we we move um we we proceed with caution but we always we always get it done you know we'll always we'll always get there and the thing that never changes of course is uh, you the listener talking to you directly um, you being here, exactly, that's yeah. the most important thing. It's weird that you're here every time. Interesting. Every time you're listening, we know you're there. You're here. We're aware of you. We feel uh, it. We respect you. We love you. And, you know, we're grateful for you devoting some of your time because time is precious. Yeah. So you in the street, <laughs> give you a polite nod of recognition. Those in the video like this. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, one of them. Yeah. Very, well, there very we go. nice. But yeah, to, I guess let's pile into it. Um, horror news, right, Ben? Uh, well, of course, not just horror news, but the news in general is obviously quite uh, bleak. Horrific at the, right now, yeah. Quite bleak at the moment, and we completely understand that maybe the fact that we're proceeding with pushing out weekly content seems to be a little bit strange i guess in a way because it's easy to be completely um taken absorbed over by, by the absorbed, by the news yeah, cycle right and I, I think i don't know if you felt similar then when the when the news first hit it does kind of make you wonder anything else that you're doing now whether that's following a hobby being excited about the things you normally be excited about sometimes even just doing your regular day job right which is for something as frivolous as as just the wages that you get like it's something to think about but we had a chat about it before we came on and we've decided obviously the terrible the terrible news of things going on in not just ukraine but all over the world where there are conflicts spanning things um we are going to put the content anyway it doesn't mean that it's not on our minds it doesn't mean that we don't care about those things but i think as you put it like uh, escaping from some of these things and having an outlet for just a different conversation it's a it's a healthy thing to have let's see you know escapism is important but we also understand that we are in a very privileged position that we're able to sit in the comfort of our homes um and and do something what which may seem as trivial as review a horror movie of the week but um I was, i'm sure i speak for everybody involved with the podcast the uh, solidarity of everybody in Ukraine and as you mentioned anyone involved in global conflict as well but we're here to continue putting out the content uh, which might mean something very small to someone who needs a little bit of escapism but we understand in the grand scheme of things you know of course there are monumentally more important things happening but we just wanted to acknowledge it I guess. And if you are listening and having any type of you know any type of difficulty or trouble in your life you know with we're thinking of you at times like this. So, um, you know, stay safe out there, everybody. Stay safe. We hope everyone's doing okay. Um, but, yeah, without that, I don't think there's anything else that came up news cycle-wise, right, Ben? There's no... 
Um, I've seen a couple of things in the Ooh. horror news cycle. On, of, of, obviously, when you're looking on news websites these days, uh, currently, as as we are, and the and the was it the first of March, 2022, it always does it does seem like well, I want to know what's happening with this and that. No, unfortunately not. But I guess we're going to talk about the lineup for, on this podcast for this month. Um, we've scheduled in five episodes as a five week. Uh, month five wednesday is, month yeah i think when was the last five wednesday month last march was a five wednesday as well i think something about march what's going on yeah crazy uh obviously starting off with a bang planet terror this week next week the 9th of march we're going to be talking paranormal activity with returning guest georgie broad who's obviously been on the podcast plenty and she's getting involved again which is an absolute delight yeah, Georgie is uh, facing some old fears. I heard on her former podcast, the Valkyries podcast, that she has some terrible memories um, of paranormal activity. Um, she swore she'd never watch it again uh, live on her podcast, which prompted me to DM her immediately and say, would you watch it again, though? And she, <laughs> yeah. and she agreed yes. So uh, she's going to be here to talk to us about that. And you can hear about how it traumatised her greatly. Yeah, I like that. Too. I like f- talking about films with people who are actually scared of them because that's interesting. Most of the time we talk, talk about films with people, we get people on as guests who have enjoyed films. It's one of their favourites. So of course, they've got lots to say. But that's completely different having somebody who's genuinely quite scared of it. So let's see what happens. I think yeah. I always remember enjoying it. So looking forward to watching it again. Not seen it since all those years ago. I think I've only ever seen it once. So it'll be interesting to revisit it. Um, the week after that, the 16th of March, is going to be a Fright Fest Glasgow special. So we've been knee deep, waist deep. Up to the eyeballs, deep. mate. It's Up to the eyeballs. In, in Fright Fest movies, there are 12 films being shown at Fright Fest. We're going to try and watch as many of them as we, we can get our hands on. Uh, and then we're going to have a special where we discuss uh, all of the films in general but also we've got some interviews with the filmmakers lined up as well so we'll be putting them out as i guess bonus bonus content but th- the content will go on the main feed as well not just we'll see the how pa- they, patrons yeah we'll see how they chop together i guess we'll see after we've got the interviews recorded how how long they run whether it's worth chopping them into the episode itself or whether we release them on their own feed but really exciting then i don't know about you i feel like a legitimate film journalist here for a second oh my god i mean i'm not like well <laughs> what, what what makes a legitimate film journalist uh, obviously we get... last week <laughs> i was Marcos gonna say that yeah uh we need to we need some advice from lucy how do we how do we get ron tomatoes accredited please um i don't know some people would say to be a film journalist you literally just have to write about films or podcasts about films something we've been doing for over five years so maybe yeah we've got the credentials i think i think, I think we We'll, we'll especially with uh, an event like Fright Fest, there's a lot more independent filmmakers out there, particularly like genre filmmakers. We'll be able to talk to them about their um, about their experiences. We'll be able to showcase some films that you might not see at your cinema, um, and maybe introduce something new. I'm really excited about the lineup. Um, I've seen some great yeah. stuff already. Um, looking forward to talking about it all. Yeah, be interesting discussing twelve films in one episode. Uh, obviously, we won't be covering them as extensively as we cover the on usual on usual episodes. But yeah, I'm sure we'll have lots, yeah. lots and lots to say. A little different, and I think transparently at the top as well, we're not going to necessarily review them in the same way. Again, you're talking a lot of independent films that they're not looking at Hollywood budgets. It's not like you know, one week Amityville Horror, an absolute mainstay of of Hollywood, a huge franchise movie, a C minus. I'm not going to go out and do the like. It's very unfair to rate, I think, independent films on the same to the same yeah. bar that you do something that's had a really big commercial release. But we'll certainly be showcasing our favourites, pointing the directions of things that we really think are worth you checking out. So uh, yeah, hmm. tune in for that one. And obviously, even if you're unable to get to Glasgow to watch it yourself. Tickets are still available if you are within range of it. Um, but if you're not, um, you know, come and come and live it through us and then add things to your watch list accordingly. Live vicariously through 
us. Your favourite spooky friends. On the I was going to say podcast. I was going to say three idiots, but it's a bit mean to just tire you no, saying brush on tire myself. No, don't don't put yourself down, Ben. I think certainly <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, not an idiot. You got out of bed. You dressed yourself this morning. You all right? I did. I did. Uh, have I got underwear on? Yeah, I remembered yeah. that on the inside we as well. So yeah, you're doing something right. There we go. I'm not Superman. Uh, after the, so after the fright fest episode on the 23rd of March, we'll be covering Ty West's new movie X, the American slasher movie. I think we discussed a trailer that came out a little while back. I'm really looking forward um, to this. So like film crew on a secluded farm shooting a porno. Things get possibly violent, possibly supernatural, possibly scary. Who knows? I don't, we don't know much about it other than that. So that'll be interesting to do a new film as well. Yeah. Uh, I think we've given if, ourselves like a week after release. No, we're not quite on the cusp of release on that one. We want the time to... Uh, we're not yeah, sure how I mean, wide a release it's going to get. We need to make sure we get time to go see it. Yeah. If we have any issues, we might switch these last two episodes around. But this is how the this is what it's looking like at the moment. Um, subject to change, you know. If we change things, don't worry about it. Uh, That's all right. You'll get them both eventually. You'll get them both eventually. Yeah. And then on the thirtieth of March, we're covering a movie that I can't quite believe we haven't covered before, and that's The Witch, which is I even had to like traipse back through episodes and google to see if we covered it but but no somehow we didn't and i think we were podcasting when that movie came out as well or, we, or maybe we just started the podcast when that movie came out we were knee deep I keep saying knee deep we are we are we are we are straight we're doing an empire top 50 list so maybe we didn't even maybe look at new, new releases maybe that's how it happened maybe it came out while you were doing the top 50 list but it was so new that it hadn't made the list because I'd imagine yeah. it'd feature on some top 50 lists now, right? It's very that well thought right, of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, never seen The Witch. Looking forward to it. You've never seen The Witch? No, I know oh. all about know all about Black Phillip, but I don't... I, um... I had a look on my letterbox to see how many times I've seen it. I've seen it three times. I don't oh, know what thrice. Time. Thrice. Maybe, maybe like I watched it with somebody, possibly. I don't know. Um, like, oh, you got to watch this. you got to watch it too. Oh, go on then. We all like a bit of Black Phillip. And uh, Anya Taylor Joy is a joy, so it's nice. Um, yeah, and that's how March looks for the podcast. Very exciting. Like looking forward to. Uh, sorry, plenty to look forward to. Yeah, and then anything else in the terms of news that we haven't really covered? We know that another well, scream has been greenlit, right? That happened. Yeah. Did we discuss that at any point? If we haven't um, done it now, screams, scream six, got- right? Scream 6 got greenlit. Fans are going, oh, we're going crazy. Uh, Sydney Prescott herself, um, Neve Campbell, I read something this week where she said, I might do it. I'll read the script. And But I'm like, well, what, what could the script be that it makes you not want to do it? Ghostface in space? Ghostface. Yeah, definitely do that. Yeah. I can't imagine why she wouldn't. I mean, absolutely no disrespect to Neve Campbell as an actress, but Scream is her bread and butter. It's the jewel. Uh, is it in a uh, crane? Is it is it is it a contract negotiation thing? Like when Tom Holland goes, "Oh, I ain't got no plans to do any more Spider Man's just yet," <laughs> and then they go, "All right, Tom, have a have a few, yeah. have a few have, more million. Possibly sounds 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 like something, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, what 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 could happen next? What could happen next? What would Scream Two slash Scream Six be called? Uh, just scream again, I guess. Screaming. Screams. Screams, <laughs> dollar sign. Um, Scream legacy, it feels too obvious, doesn't it? feels too and obvious. Then there'll be lots of talk of... I wonder if at some point they have to have a little break because right now we do have legacy... We do have legacy sequels that then are followed up on. They probably have tropes to lean on, but if they ever get in front of the wave, mm. how can they then comment if a trope doesn't exist yet? Oh, Oh, wow, that's an interesting way of looking at it. In front of the wave, predicting horror tropes before yeah. they become horror tropes. That would I mean, be interesting. It would be interesting. Would it be impossible? Who knows? Depends who's writing it. Depends who's writing it, you know? With the, if, it's the, if it's the same team as the last one, I think they probably have the chops to have a go at it, at the very least. Um, yeah. But yeah, and what else have we got? I saw um, 
Beetlejuice 2? Is that officially confirmed or just pretty much confirmed very heavily? Am I, am I accidentally sharing my screen? So I swear everything I look at, you go, hang on a minute. Beetlejuice 2? Yeah. And that's exactly uh, what I'm looking oh, at. Oh, you know what? I'm Scream 6. I'm predicting the future. I am <laughs> writing it. <laughs> Are you Scream 6, Andy Conduit? Yeah, I'm Turner. Scream 6. <laughs> Maybe you should write, Andy Con. You should write Scream 6, Mr. Conduit Turner. Um, so yeah, Beetlejuice 2, which I feel like has been discussed or talks have been surfacing maybe for the last 20 years who knows yeah. um but obviously michael keaton is you say it says here his career is in an upswing but he's been his career has been in an upswing since birdman possibly which was a fair yeah. while ago he's been uh, like i don't think michael keaton ever truly went away did he, he was always still in things no. and he's gonna be in the flash movie right uh, yeah, as... he's in the Flash. He's Batman eighty nine again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this could be interesting. Apparently, Brad Pitt's company Plan B has come aboard to produce Beetlejuice two, which could shoot this summer with original stars Michael Keaton and Win- Win- Winona Ryder reprising their their roles. What have they been doing for all of these years? Just just, just hanging chilling. out. But then again, they didn't know each other because dancing. There was the cartoon of Beetlejuice where. He was like her mate, What's right? That? Yeah, there was. It's, it's of a similar era, right? There was a, there was a, there was a Beetlejuice, and there was a little shop of horrors. But obviously, the villains of those, like the ghosty man Beetlejuice and the man-eating plant Audrey too, technically yeah. the baddies, the villains of the pieces, yeah. but also the best characters. So they're recast in the cartoon version where they are just like a bit of a mischievous friend instead. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, unproblematic mischievous friend no yeah. mur- no murder right zero no murder. murder sometimes they might spook a person a bit mm. yeah maybe the maybe the plant in the little shop of horrors cartoon would maybe bite someone on a bum maybe Oi, Who knows? stop doing that what am i like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe maybe they'll go back to that universe or maybe they'll throw them back together. Who knows how Beetlejuice will get back and then, I guess, still think about marrying Winona Ryder. Less problematic now. Now she's an adult. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That makes a lot more sense. Um, The only other piece of news I've got is uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which came out on Netflix. We still haven't got around to doing our bonus episode. Um, Unfortunately, life's been getting in the way for us, but we will will get it out there. It's still on the list for us to discuss. but I just thought I'd mention that it has had 29,180,000 hours watched this week. And it's the second uh, most watched movie on Netflix. You know what? That's good for the genre, isn't it? If nothing yeah. else, we've got, we've, got, we've got to mention that. Because I, I think Leatherface didn't like... It didn't seem like the whole of ho- the horror of like film Twitter and horror fans were sort of interested in Leatherface coming out and watched it as soon as it did. The fact that Texas Chainsaw Massacre has come out and seemed to have grabbed everybody's attention the way it has, whether you think it's good or not, is a positive for the genre. Yeah, I think um, it certainly shows that that series still has impact. I have no idea how the financials work for Netflix, but it feels like, I assume they probably bought it for a certain amount of money. And then that mm-hmm. shows that it's still viable. So hopefully the creators behind it made what they need to. And hopefully this shows that there is still interest in the genre. Like I think I said last week, whether you think it's a very skillful marketing technique or something that's more cynically done, I probably, I expect that it's done well from the really polarised reactions on social media, all that very free marketing between whether you like it or whether you're hating yeah. it, whether you like it or whether you hate it, or whether you watch it to see how bad it is and you hate watch it or whether you watch it because you love it, guess what? Mm-hmm. Your viewing records show up exactly the same. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> those hours get counted. Ah, oh, loads of people watch it, but they hated it. Well, that's sad, isn't it? Let me just dry my eyes with this these stacks of money. Yeah, still watched it. Got your time. Still watched it, and to, and as we mentioned, time is precious. And you know uh, what? Like as I said, ninety minutes, fine, <laughs> totally fine. 
uh yeah that's pretty much all i've got down for news i guess we were going to talk about what we've been watching we've been watching fright fest movies this week which we can't discuss until after the event um which we will be doing on our special fright fest out the wazoo but uh we are embargoed to shit guys chained up can't talk about it can't talk about it you know i don't mind that it's nice to say the word oh i've been embargoed mate sorry yeah, and, and you know, to be fair, I think we've been more controlled about it than anyone who's had a review of uh, of Batman this week. Uh, the like, Batman. Oh, guys, just just so you know, I have I have seen the Batman. Uh, I, I can't talk about it, of course. Uh, couldn't possibly mention anything about it, but yeah, I don't we, know when I, I don't know when I'm going to get to go and see the Batman. I'm kind of worried. I mean, um, I can't imagine it being a Sunday. I think Sunday. Okay, maybe I'll do the same. Um, also, I can't imagine there being any major spoilers for Batman, considering... Batman wins? Fucking hell, spoils! <laughs> considering we know enough about the character and the characters, you know, if somebody dies or somebody doesn't die, it's a bit like, well, did they die for... You know what I mean? I can't imagine what the major spoiler would be, apart from it's good, it's bad, and even then, you know, it's debatable. Yeah. I think IGN gave it a 10. I think I saw other places give yeah, it a 6. Yeah, really, really solid reviews mostly, I think. What's that? Yeah. He's got a Batman-themed car in it. Fucking hell, spoilers. Jesus Christ, what are you bloody... Oh, Some I sort of think... Batmobile. Oh, that's a good name. Copyright that. I used to just think he used to get right on a tube. <laughs> I mean, you see some weird people on a tube, you know? Yeah. man dressed as a bat, probably fairly normal. normal. Totally normal. Uh, I know you've been playing uh, a brand new game that was released this week. Yeah. Um, in many ways, um, a horror, because <laughs> torture is a kind of horror. Yeah. And it's yeah. not a bad thing, actually. Like, I, I'm i not a Soulspawn player myself. Um, I have tried and failed to get into Dark Souls twice. I got to the second boss of time. Um, so I've started Elden Ring. Um, I was tweeting about it this morning, actually. I've struggled to get a foothold to start with because and I don't consider myself bad at video games. I've played them all my life, and I'm quite good at them. Um, struggle to get a foothold to start with because it's brutal, and it expects you to have more patience. And part of it is my <laughs> problem because it does explain... Here's my problem then is that it explains mechanics and controls it does explain them to you like i got my bow out and it goes andy here's how you use your bow here my problem is is that it doesn't tell me in um a way that it's like yeah try using your bow in this safe space and get good oh, at it okay. and then go and play yeah, yeah, yeah. It. it tells me in quite an uncompelling text box in a menu I don't want to read and skip before I've really absorbed it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, I get it. These three buttons, fire me arrows. Fantastic. Next. Thanks. And then it's like, you won't necessarily do that for a little while. It's like, right, I'm going to try this both. It. Nope. Drinking from my flask, even though I'm at full health. That's me uh, wasting that. Then nope, dead. Like literally when I got out in the first yeah. instance. Oh, wait, what? Drinking the thing. Drinking the thing that yeah, drinking the thing to heal you. you. Oh no, no, I just didn't need to drink it, and then was standing (laughs) still having a drink when someone came and stabbed me in the back. But it is—it's fairly (laughs) brutal to begin with. So you come out of this lift in the first area, um, which is the the first introduction to the open world. Beautiful scenes. I walked in a straight line out of it, and then met what I found out was an incredibly hard enemy—a big golden knight on a horse who literally just shot me in half immediately and i was like right that's me dead so i tried that a couple of times but okay it's a big open world i'm maybe not meant to go that way i'll go to the left went over to the left saw a big saw a big giant who stomped me and killed me immediately i thought okay but i feel like he wasn't quite as brutal as the night i'm going to try that again and then i in many ways then i've beaten the i've beaten the big horrible giant because I think some kind of glitch triggered. He did kill me as I almost killed him. And then, whereas in these games, things return once you've been for a rest, he seems to have fucked off forever. So I might have glitched him out of existence. Glitched him out of existence. There glitched we go. him out of existence. That's so the I, way I, to win. I've won that one. If I can do that hundreds of times to every other enemy, I'll have won the game. But I. Um, <laughs> so then I wandered off a different way and I found, I guess, 
what might be, even though it's an open world, the way that someone like me at very least was meant to go. So there were some little, there were some more manageable enemies, shall we say, some big old bats. And I was fighting them, got through them. And then I found, oh, joy of joys. Oh no, it didn't happen that. So basically some, then I saw a bit of water and there was a giant enemy crab who fucking claw fucked me into into oblivion. Like big smash, scary crap. smash, smash me into into bits. So I'm like, okay, maybe not that way. And then I found a lovely cliff face, and there were just some weak and slow zombies, and I was having a great time hacking them away until yeah. like a big ghost bear materialized and oh. piffed me off into the shadow realm. That was me dead again. And then I was like, Jesus. right, I'm gonna have to relax. I'm gonna have to think about this. Yeah. And then one time I respawned by this thing, and then this big dark night. It's like that bit of Monty Python and the Holy Grail where the historians talk and then a knight just comes fast <laughs> and like whops his head off. That happened to me. Um, Shit. Yeah, I, I was like, okay, I and need so, to, I need to and, readdress this and come back and come back and try again. I'm, I'm achieving nothing here. So have you, have you played things like Dark Souls and? I played. And, uh... I played Dark Souls. I got to. I got a little further into Dark Souls. I got to second or third boss, maybe. Um, okay. My problem is that I have no patience and something else will come up, but I'm determined to keep trying with Elden Ring. So, yeah, um, you know, how's it, uh, how's it looking on PS5? So? Oh, it looks, looks great. I've got it on the, uh, I've got it on the new Xbox, but it's, um, oh, okay. Okay. But it looks, it looks great. It looks, looks fantastic, but it is, it's a, it's a, it's a souls game. It's a from software game. It's, yeah. it's hard. It doesn't really hold your hand. And mostly it's my own fault because what I don't want to do is read a thing. I just want to go and be good at this game, please. Yeah. I know what you mean. But I'm going to keep uh, trying. I'm going to keep trying. And you've been playing Horizon, right? Persistence is key. I mean, yeah, so I've been playing Horizon Forbidden West and it's nowhere near as difficult. Although I have got a little bit backed into a corner a few times, um, including recently where I don't think I've leveled up enough. Um, it's great. It's not is a bit more extens- expansive than the last game. Seems like there's absolutely loads to do, which is nice. Uh, yeah, so I'm enjoying it. And it, it does look lovely. I've only got it on PS4, but it does look incredibly lovely. Um, the world just seems, even though the world of Zero Dawn was pretty special, this seems like they've obviously upped up their game a little bit, Guerrilla Games. So that's great. I'm, I do want to get on that, but I am trying to avoid the real life horrors of buying a game and then not having a chance to play it before it reduces in price. Yeah. Um, I've just been semi got away with it because it was a Christmas present, but I've just seen today the real life horrors of wasted time and effort is that I got Guardians of the Galaxy for Christmas. Great. Oh yeah. Fantastic. I, I, I know you've completed it, Ben. Like I've been looking forward to playing it, but it installed, but I've been busy. So I haven't had a chance to play it. Haven't got a chance to play it yet. My uh, sister kindly got it for me for Christmas, as I say. So it's a very nice gift. And then it's been announced today. Oh, like Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, we're whacking that on Game Pass. That thing that you have oh, where most of the games are all free. I mean, great, great, great value, isn't it? But yeah. It sucks when you've already bought the game or someone else has. If I'd bought it myself, I'd have been livid. <laughs> so you can't really predict it, can you? Yeah, but my, um, my plan is definitely I'm trying to do a lot better and actually buy games when I intend to play them to avoid this happening because with Sony looking at whatever their equivalent is to Game Pass as well and rightly they should because it's like it's a no-brainer right now it's so good um I I I want to avoid being stung by this by buying a game and it then basically becoming effectively free because it's on a service that you already pay for before I've had a chance to play it seems to just play it straight away to beat that yeah it seems like game pass is a lot better than playstation plus at the moment because i can't remember the last time i downloaded anything from playstation plus i and... always down da- i always download them but then have i ever got time to play them yeah, yeah it's all just true. having a job like yeah the drudgery of work and family bloody drudgery <laughs> the drudgery of work and family that's what that's what i say to my family before everyone goes to sleep at night i say more drudgery tomorrow is it and <laughs> yeah, they go see you later. <laughs> they go it sure is Night night, love you. Bye. Uh, have you, apart from that, then apart from gaming, have you watched anything this week, or has it just been? Um, just that, really. Just you know, just the just some gaming, a little bit of fright fest, and then um, yeah, I, think I spoke about it twice already. I finished Chucky. It was great. I see the second series of that has been announced for this year. Yeah, 
Oh, yeah, I saw that. Um, what's his name? What's his flavor? Uh, what's his name? Oh, I oh, know as well. Don. Don Man- Manchini. Manchini. John Manchini. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He posted like an image which was Chucky with a big two behind it. So obviously that's been confirmed for this year. I know it was confirmed yeah. already, but now it's coming yeah. out this year. This um, year's a fast turnaround. Great. Like I'm yeah. I'm I'm here for it. It was having finished the series now, it was really, really well done. Yeah, I need to, it's on it's on the list, so I will get around to it. The only the only thing I've watched this week is uh, me and some friends have been doing like uh, a movie night every now and then where we watch a film that someone chooses a film that the others haven't seen. So I hosted this week and I chose The Raid. Okay. Um, just because I thought, you know, mindless action really where you don't, I say mindless, but, <laughs> um, and I've only ever seen it once before, but I think it was every bit as exhilarating as the first time I saw it. And it's like a clinic in fight, choreography i think i mean story wise there are some com- there are some similar similarities to dread fight your way up a tower block to the big boss at the top i mean it's like action video game 101 really as well isn't it um yeah. but yeah it's really really well done and i'm gonna probably watch the sequel this week i've never seen the sequel i've seen the raid um a few times it's a great movie but i've never seen the sequel i'd really like to see it mm, not sure if i've seen the sequel either i can't quite remember um but yeah that was it and also obviously because this week's movie was part of a particular uh, double bill i did watch the accompanying death proof as well uh just to see, just to get some comparisons. I mean, they're very, very different films, but obviously there are yeah. the same, there are some character crossovers. Yeah, I've never seen Death Proof. I've seen Planet Terror many times, so I've never seen Death Proof. Oh, really? Oh, and Death Proof is really, really good. You know the whole Grindhouse thing? We have a we have a slight connection to that, right? Because obviously in the entire ground, that Grindhouse thing, there are a number of fake trailers um and in yeah. the edgar wright directed one don't um yeah. former guest and friend of the show emily booth is one of the characters there we go it. there we go um yeah how exciting so we did we did discuss that when emily was on the episode where we talked about the gate last year i can't remember how long ago it was feels like a long time ago. it was right was it around halloween it's like building up to halloween maybe not um but yeah, so we discussed time is, that. Time, and, is, time is meaningless now. <laughs> and the fake trailers obviously have spawned actual movies, so like Machete, Hobo with a Shotgun, um, but some of the other ones are phenomenal, like Don't is great, Thanksgiving, uh, and Werewolf Women of the SS, which I feel like out of all of the trailers, I wanted that one to be made the most, because it's got Nicolas Cage's Fu, Fu Manchu. Oh, jeez. Wow. Um, and yeah, it just looks like, I mean, that looks like ultimate grindhouse schlock. And I would have liked to have seen that. But then again, I like the Machete movies. Machete and... Is it Machete Kills? Machete Kills, yeah. Very, very stupid in the best possible way. And Danny Trejo, the craggiest of the craggy-faced men, is a fantastic lead, you know? And you believe, even though he's like a womanizer, and I, I believe it. I'm like, he is Machete. Yeah. So on your version of this movie today, did you have... Was it just a machete trailer you had? Just the version I watched had the just the machete trailer, and then in film there was um, they watched what, women in cages uh, mm. inside the film itself. Oh yeah, women in cages. Uh, okay, so if that's it in terms of yeah, what we've been watching, get, let's get onto the film. As it segued nicely, gets onto film. So uh, this week's movie is Planet Terror. It's a twenty. I'll start that again. Planet Terror is a 2007 American action comedy horror film written and directed by Robert Rodriguez. Um, the film was originally released theatrically as part of Grindhouse, which was a double feature that combined Planet Terror with Quentin Tarantino's Death Proof. Um, apparently Grindhouse underperformed at the domestic box office, so Planet Terror was then released as a standalone feature in other countries, um, which is fairly interesting. I... So, sorry, synopsis, after an experimental bioweapon is released, turning thousands into zombie-like creatures, it's up to a rad, ragtag group of survivors to stop the infected and those behind its release. Um, got a couple of choice reviews on Letterboxd. Okay. Oh, wait, 
sorry, so sorry. So on IMDb it's 7.1, on Letterbox 3.3. I haven't got the Rotten Tomato score, but I will. I will discover that in a second. Got a couple of choice reviews here from Letterboxd um, users. So, number one Gizmo fan says, Gun Leg, in capitals. Uh, <laughs> which, you know, is a nice... Did, did Gizmo like Gun Leg or no Gun Leg? Three and a half stars. So I think oh, okay, quite so Gun Leg. Moderate on Gun Leg. Yeah. So Wes says Rose McGowan flying through the air as she launches rockets at zombies with a machine gun leg is better than all of cinematic history. Five stars. Five stars. Uh, oh, okay. Looking at Rotten Tomatoes, it's got 76% on the tomato meter, and that's the critic score, and 77 on the audience score. So fairly similar. Okay. Um, and one more. Dirk H says. I can handle gross zombies. I can handle excessively overstylized visual visuals. I can handle Tarantino bleeding empty from his ass. But I gotta ask, how the fuck does she pull the trigger? Four stars. Yeah. Tenses. Just the, just the leg <laughs> muscles. Tenses the leg muscles. But how does she switch between gunfire and like the little grenade launcher thing she got going on? Just on the mind. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> you got the answers ready to go. Just with a <laughs> Just with a bloody mind. Uh so this came out in 2007 alongside Death Proof. So you said you haven't seen Death Proof. Never seen Death Proof, no. I don't remember if I saw the Citizen. I guess in 2007 I would have been maybe I did. I definitely didn't see like a double feature, like a grindhouse double feature, because I remember I remember in the UK wanting to see the grindhouse double feature, but it was it wasn't shown in very many places. I think possibly I saw Death Proof in the cinema and then waited a bit for Planet Terror. But that particular visual you've got in the background was like a poster I had in my, yes, in my bedroom yeah. <laughs> for when years. It was like a staple piece of my bedroom for years. Who knows what happened to it? Um, still yeah. there. It's <laughs> still there. Yeah, it's just fallen off the wall, ripped into ripped in so many in all the corners but yeah obviously very very different films it's not like they're two similar sort of films like for example a double feature of Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction could potentially be actually I'll scrap that let's say a different Rodriguez film let's say something like From Dust Till Dawn and Pulp Fiction to a degree even though one's horror and one's not Mm-hmm. As, a, as a double would kind of work so they're very different films Planet Terror is the only one you can really say is a horror movie but it's also it is also a comedy um, but yeah I always remember really enjoying this when it came out for its silliness and it's spotting cameos as well of all the yeah it's it's such a tightly packed movie and it comes at such a pace we'll cover this as well this was quite a for us and going through these movies as we do I think this was quite a daunting one to to come up with one because it's you know a heavily stylized movie but it moves at such a pace that keeping up with it is quite difficult um and also when a movie's intentionally funny harder for us to poke fun at it because obviously it's trying to be over the top and ridiculous it feels like they've already anticipated like what's the most ridiculous thing that could happen here and gone yeah. and gone on it but i have unique kind of memories of this one when this b- was out i think it might have been at the exact cut off point i may have just missed it at the cinema in the uk it's when i moved to i moved out to korea good korea south korea at the time um and i, I may have missed the cinema release of it so then i eventually um saw it when it came out on home video release while I was out there. Um, it wasn't oh, particularly okay. widely distributed, but I remember <laughs> no. we'd, we'd, been, we'd been out and we, I got a copy of it at last and then it was just a case that we just watched it back in our flat one evening. And it did feel like, like movies in Korea when you watch them on TV, anything that's English language, it just does subtitles, they don't, they don't dub it. So you can watch movies on the TV all the time, but occasionally you would get a fairly recent release you've got and go out, go out and get it um, and bring it and bring it home and it was in this particular case 
people did feel like a, he put like a pirate movie or something like that. That's uh, that, <laughs> yeah. That's that's like an underground film. It has it. Like, it does that vibe of it so well, and you know, intentionally so. Right, this is very stylized of the of the movies of that era, even though it is set in what is effectively current time at the time of release. Right, because mm-hmm. we get. It's not meant to be like the like the seventies or anything, is it? Because they. No, the, only refer- got- the only reference I get that dates it is someone mentions Osama bin Laden. So it is yeah. post 2000s <laughs> so, that it's set. Someone mentions in. Osama bin Laden. I think at one point, Fergie, Fergie Licious, Fergie, who was in this movie, has got a mobile phone, yes. which looks to be 2007 era. I know it's difficult to, yeah, they have- to kind of put pinpoint it. But they have fairly modern, they have fairly modern phones. Yeah, that's kind of it. So in terms of the cast, uh pretty stacked so rose mcgowan is essentially the lead role as cherry darling freddie rodriguez is el rey he's like the hero of the piece i kind of don't really recognize him from anything else i looked up what else i knew him from i is he in now what's the series he's like an ugly betty or something like that he's like in a fairly large he's in, ugly betty, TV. Yeah. he's in a fairly large tv show yeah. that just falls outside of my visibility of something i know particularly well very interesting uh, facial hair, let's say. It's like a combination of a soul patch and then like a bit of a goatee. He's got a couple of ideas going on there. Uh, I respect it, you know. Uh, other big names in this, Josh Brolin, uh, Marley Shelton, uh, Michael Bean, of course. Is that you say his surname? Bean? I've always yeah, said Bean. Bean. I've always said Bean, not by Ed. Uh, by Ed, no. It's, by uh, Ed. Bean. Bruce... Bruce Willis, Naveen Andrews, I guess, like right in the hype, right in the middle of the lost hype. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ferg- Fergalicious Fergie, isn't it? Tom Savini, as soon as he appeared, I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty awesome. He was he was surely behind some of the special effects as well, right? Just for what we see here. Oh, yeah, he's got to be. I mean, there is a Tom Savini effect um, where Tom Savini, spoiler, of course, but where Tom Savini as a police officer gets ripped apart. Made into up. pieces. Made into pieces, yeah. And I'm like, he's definitely made a dummy of himself to be ripped apart. Oh, yeah, he probably what? just had it. He probably just had it uh, knocking about. Michael Parks is in this as Earl McGraw. Rest in peace, Michael Parks. But also, Earl McGraw, the character, is in Kill Bill. Okay. And, let me just remind myself of this, and the same character is also in From Dust Till Dawn, Texas Ranger Earl McGraw. Didn't recognise um, that. I'm gonna have to go back and watch those. They have seen both of those movies. So he's in Kill Bill Volume One. Michael Parts also plays Esteban Viejo in Kill Bill Volume Two. I think right at the, right at the start, right in the early in the first couple of scenes of Kill Bill Volume Two, because I was like, okay, Michael Parks again. Wait a minute, he's playing as a Spanish man? What's going-? Yeah. So I like I like the fact that characters from the Rodriguez slash Tarantino verse appear in this and you know not a major character as such in this movie but still pretty cool quentin tarantino who loves a cameo obviously this isn't his movie but he gets involved as a horrible bastard and the only other people worth me- me- mentioning i guess electra and elise avellan are the crazy babysitter twins who are also in death proof apparently <laughs> yeah but not not all that much i think they just walk into a bar, possibly, where some of the main characters are. And I went, is that the twins? Who can tell? Um, Apparently it is them. And, you know, from everyone, it's such a stacked cast. And, then, like, some people have gone on to huge things, you know, most noted, like, Josh Brolin and so on, right? They're, yeah, they're huge, huge characters now, huge actors. Yeah. And this has got the distinct Robert Rodriguez, Robert Rodriguez flavour as well. I mean, the adult... Robert Rodriguez movies, not the pornos, but you know what I mean. The not the spy kids of this world. I mean, like the from Dust Till Dawns and the Desperados and stuff. It's got that sort of vibe, and obviously the very distinct choice to have the sort of fake film grainy stuff all over it throughout, which you kind of know you notice initially, but then you kind of forget about. Yeah, and it comes into great effect. We'll talk about the the choices here when he's doing some particular moments of um of like gore effect as well or when you like they use the grain effect really really well just to basically cover some of your seams 
Yeah, a little true. bit. So it works, it works. <laughs> yeah. It works incredibly well. Like when someone's having a leg pulled off, probably save themselves millions by having it just glitch out, so you can cut between. <laughs> yeah, there's like the grain, but also like the glitch, and almost like the is it like the the film burn when yeah. it kind of like that's yeah, kind get, of covers uh, things up. We get yeah. that, you know, to great effect to basically accelerate a lot of plot points. They don't want to take the time to explain later on as well. Yeah, and I mean. You can kind of forgive a film like this for stuff like that because, as much as it might be like, oh, they've done that on purpose, you can you you kind of understand why, you know, and it kind of has its place in a film like this. Yeah. It's which part doesn't... of the charm of this of this um, whether you call it a parody or like an homage to uh, the 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 style it's... of movie. However, yeah. however you want to put it, like it, it's played to very good effect. It's somewhere yeah. in between, isn't it? A parody and homage to grindhouse movies, B movies, um, horror movies of the era of like the, the 70s and early 80s, I guess. Um, really over the top, overacted, over character, uh, so over the top characters, um, ridiculous dialogue, unbelievable gore effects, um, and you know, it's it, it's funny as well. That the fact that it is so ridiculous makes it enjoyable and funny. Yeah. And it's a, I, I'd say it's always a good time with this film. I've seen I've seen it a fair few times now. Yeah, and always it, it's a, a it's fun. a good laugh, and this is a perfect one as well, Ben. If you wanted to, you mentioned doing your movie night where you put things on. Perfect. You could put this on at a party, have it running in the background, whether people are sitting watching or not. There's something to see going on here. Yeah, definitely. Um, take your eyes away from it for a few seconds. Turn back. Something, ap- something absolutely mad will be happening. <laughs> that bar's no on fire, and they're they're on the way out. <laughs> that bar's on fire. What's that? Uh, why? Where? Why is that actress's hands not working? Oh, you've missed a key plot point, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's good. It's good fun. And so, where do we start with we this begin, movie? Of course, with the machete trailer. Um, <laughs> yeah. We, yeah, we, we like part of the movie is, is a, a trailer for something else. So we get the machete trailer, um, you know, which is great. Like you mentioned already, Ben, it, it stirred that actual film to be to be made because you've come up with a fun concept for like an over the top action action series that they then went on to deliver. Then we uh, go into true horror comes up with a very big theatrical presentation the weinstein the weinstein company i'm like oh <laughs> yeah but not, not just that also while rose mcgowan's um like performing on stage which obviously rose mcgowan famously um famously accused i say accused but i don't know how far it went in terms of in terms of him being prosecuted i know he's in the clink right now so maybe it was just one of his many crimes that did did sort of cause him to be um, doing doing a bit of time, doing a bit of porridge. Well, it's not his last legs, and he just just give up, mate. Um, I, but know, I reckon that, he was that... faking that allegedly, looking poorly. Oh yeah, um, of course. Yeah. Oh no, he's, he's, he's trying to do trying to do what's his name, trying to palpitate it. I'm so weak and old. Oh, if they'd let him off, he would have unlimited powered them. But um... <laughs> God. But Rose McGowan obviously did accuse him of assaulting her. So for that name to pop up while. Um, she's dancing obviously has a different sort of meaning to us yeah. who, who know all this years later but regardless um, it's an effective effective opening sting and we end, I think does she quit her job as well as a, yeah, as this, a is a, this is a quitting she does the thing and she comes off stage having done her go-go dancing the guy who's the club manager is like it's called go-go not cry cry She's like, well, oh, yeah, of course, I'm quitting, and then that's just the first example of like the endless, like the very deliberate dialogue choices they make in, in this movie. And some of it comes back to pay off a great deal mm-hmm. as the movie goes on. But yeah, she um, no. she quits her job and goes to walk out, and only to be immediately knocked into the bins by a truck speeding by. Oh yeah, Jesus, not straight into the bins. I was just going to say, like, this is one of the films, and I think Death Proof as well is the same. It leans heavily into misogyny. Yeah. But it feels like it's done in a way to build up the main characters, if that makes any sense at all. 
I think the reason it's done is to try and show the way these characters overcome this blatant and almost, I was going to say over the top misogyny, but I guess misogyny that does exist in this sense um, in yeah. some pockets of the world. Um, maybe not circles circles of friends that I move in, but you know. <laughs> but I, I think part of it as well, when they do this, there's a deliberate choice for the tone of those films that it's that it's referencing as well right because they are very you know they're, yeah. they're they're of an era female characters are a certain thing typically in those types of movies it's just dialed up to 11 for effects for the yeah. way this character's experiencing things right now it's definitely dialed up to 11 yeah and it does sort of it makes a lot of these characters really unsavory and it makes you feel like you're in that horrible, gritty, slightly unclean world full of... Yeah, you feel there's a film grain over everything. There's a film grain over everything. Yeah, well, don't, don't say that. The film grain's getting... I can't see through it. This is disgusting. Yeah, it's rough. Don't act like that. It but is yeah. rough. Um, but, yeah. But I think we kind of... You kind of understand it's a stylistic choice. Um that, that both of these directors, obviously Quentin Tarantino didn't direct this, but both of those directors aren't afraid to sort of add that into their um, movies, especially where strong women are the heroine yeah. in those films. It's, it's almost just like it pre presents the world from their point of view, something that they have to overcome in order to have their heroic moment or, you know, not necessarily even to do that, sometimes just as something that they're sort of constantly battling against shows it from their point of view and yeah i think it's effective albeit over the top at times yeah. and we see this truck that has rolled past her basically they're going to the military base and this is our guy um abby is already at the military base he is yeah. uh oh no does he arrive and it turns out that there's been a problem with his uh with his experiment because he is not happy with one of his underlings and is going to require his balls. Yes, yeah. so, <laughs> this is weird because this character, played by Naveen Andrews, Dr. John Abbey Abington, is portrayed in these opening scenes as villain of the piece. Um, and he loves balls, you know, he loves cutting off people's balls and keeping them in a keeping plastic little, bag. Keeping them in the little, little jar. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's there's there, there are character quirks and there are character quirks. This is definitely one of them where what you're like, oh, with, what, what, what would he do with them all? Keeping them in his little jar, like a pickled onion barrel. Yeah, well, there's a point later where he loses where some of them fall out of the jar and he's kind of like gathering them up. Like, and he gets he gets knocked over and he gets, a, he gets a face full of balls when, like, so, okay, so basically a deal, a deal goes <laughs> south. Um, Abby um, asks for this guy's balls. He goes, oh, don't bother. And he goes, well, I'm going to. All the dudes come and they grab him and they pick him up and they uh, yank his balls off and they put them in the jar. But then before you know it, Bruce Willis has shown up. The, well, this um, is the thing. Abby also just shoots the guy, cuts his balls off and then immediately shoots him. Yeah, could have shot him beforehand, saved your job. Yeah, that makes more sense. So obviously... This deal involves quantities of this deadly biochemical agent called DC2. And when Bruce Willis turns up with his squad of... Um, with his boys. With his boys, of his army dudes, they've all got like these little gas canisters that they're breathing in. And I think it looks like it's keeping them human, stopping this particular yeah. biochemical agent from affecting them. It's, when, it, when... it's, it's weird because they, for some reason, Bruce Willis in particular, so when they've captured Abby, he goes like, oh, where is the, where is the gas? And he goes, ha, in your face everywhere. And he shoots the canisters. Yeah. Um, but Bruce Willis takes his mask off and wanders into it like they're being purposefully infected. They all wander into it, don't they? It's almost like absorbing a certain amount of it gives you... Just, some, just a taste. Just a taste, but then you need this you need this other supply of gas to stop you from turning into getting all zombies, turning into a turning into a battered sausage, <laughs> turning into a horrible battered sausage from deep fried Mars bar, deep fried Mars bar face. Uh, so obviously Bruce Willis, he's he's very blistery and is 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 getting worse and worse the the longer he's not breathing in his little gas canister. Um, what would you do if you run out of that? 
Just turn into a yeah, get Mars bad, I guess. Turn into a blob man. Turn into a big yeah. puck of gristle. A, a big, a big, a big pork scratching. A big old horrible greasy pork scratching. Where do you stand on pork scratchings? Do you All think? Right. Yeah, lovely. Sometimes you'll get airborne that's a bit too hard, but you get one that's just right. Yum yum. You know what? I don't mind a pork scratching. However, there are two very different, very distinct types of pork scratching. I only like one. And you only know by the time you open the bag. It's either the hard, really like fatty, crunchy, horrible yeah, they're, ones. They're, they're your scratchings. You have to but there's some crunch. almost like fluffy like cr- crunchy that are like ones. That are like crisps. They're like, yeah. they're like big bacon quavers. Those are the best. That, that's the best, right? I think that's called pork crunch. Ah, I had some, I had some vegan pork crunch recently. Don't ask me how that works, but very interesting, very nice. Um, apart from, because something feels quite odd about just having a big old globule of fat, crunchy yeah. fat in your mouth, doesn't it? Having a, you, having, having a bit of pig. <laughs> having a bit of porky, porky pig. Um, so that's what these guys look like. And obviously from shooting the gas canisters, which Abby does, it all the green gas goes up into the air. I think there's a moment where he looks at the gas. He realises that he's caused some sort of disaster. Um, all, disaster. This gas is, all this gas is up and amongst it now. So basically, within a few, move, uh, within a few minutes of the film, the, uh, the trigger's been pulled. The event is kicking off. Yeah. Uh, I like it. I like it. Um, Abby drives away and somebody maybe a soldier or an infected person jumps up onto his car, a hand goes through the roof and we kind of think at that moment, he's got it. You're done for mate. Exactly. You've been, you've, you've had your chips. You're, you're, you're done for. Realistically. You're done for. You've got a horrible greasy zombie hand in your face. Yeah. What, you know what, what are you going to do, do about that? That that's, that's it for you. Because it does seem to be one of those, obviously the zombie virus is one of those things where it spreads through, rather than bites, it seems to be like you just kind of get, if you get in amongst it. Yeah, almost, yeah, almost anything can, um, almost anything can give you the, the infection, it would seem, any type of contact, because there are some people that get, get a bit gunged later on that, that get it as a result, right? Yeah, and there's a few different types of infected as well. There's like sort of brainless drone where you become like a zombified guy and other people kind of just balloon up, um, but they're still kind of like sentient. They still, uh, Josh Brolin's character is one example of that. Yeah, still uh, still got a bit of chat about him. Still got a bit of chat about him, recognises people, still has a goal in mind other than eat just brains. Eating, Although, just eating people. Eating brains. Although he does like that as well. He does say, I'm going to eat your brain and gain and your gain knowledge. knowledge. That's how we ended it's, up on this. That was a quiz question, wasn't that it? That was a quiz oh, question. Yeah, we, should, we should really do that. We should do that. Yeah. Time. There we go. Your, your quiz, your quizzing uh, inspired this. I don't think I got that question right, did I? No. It was, uh, no. We didn't know. It feels really iconic, that line, doesn't it? Like, yeah. I mean, it that feels was the, iconic. That was, the, that was the one that I get from this one. Although, actually, watching it back, there are a number of, like, quite good lines in this movie yeah yeah definitely uh Um, we go now to jt's barbecue place where um fergie fergalicious or since the hey mama video where they uh she introduces herself um it it sounded a bit like my to my teenage friend at least it sounded a bit like she says froggy so from now on she's always been froggy to me froggy (laughs) Yeah, so, well, that, Frog, well, so Froggy is uh, filling up a car at JT's Barbecue Shack. She's got humps, her lovely lady lumps. Check yeah. them out. That's not me um, objectifying her. That is me simply um, reading that the, out. That is the actual her, lyrics. Is that her advice or the advice of Will I Am? Advice. I'm pretty sure it's her out. advice. I think it's her advice. Okay, so yeah, she's she's instructed you to check them out. <laughs> What year do you think my humps came out? Off the top of your head. 2004. Oh, 2005. Oh, One year off. Close. That was um, close. So yeah, fresh, fresh, off the, fresh off that, she's been invited to do this. Um, 
maybe I'm just watching the wrong movies. I don't think we saw Froggy make a full time jump to movies, right? No, no, it might be the only thing I've seen her in, but it looks like she she's been in a few films. Uh, oh, after this, she voiced Hippo Girlfriend in Madagascar Escape to Africa. Hippo <laughs> Girlfriend, not even a not even a named character. It's not Froggy. even a named character. Hippo Girlfriend. Hippo Girlfriend. Um, she's been. She looks like she's had minor roles in some other run like family films. But she um, hasn't. But what we're saying is that she hasn't Lady Gaga. It. She's not gone on to no. film like starring roles. I, I don't know. To be fair, I've never. I've never seen how much of a pivotal role Hippo Girlfriend plays. Yeah, <laughs> fresh off the back of Hippo Girlfriend role, Fergie is cast as Princess Diana, <laughs> Lady <laughs> Macbeth, <laughs> Lady Macbeth. <laughs> Amazing. Oh. Uh, um, it, but, but yeah, so but... she's just she's just refilling her car with some water at uh, at, at JD's JT's uh, barbecue shop. Ever such a first bone house. So bone JT shack. Jeff Fahey, who's also in the that machete trailer, is like the bad guy. He's like a barbecue restaurant owner dude. He's trying to create the perfect barbecue sauce. Um, he's got a, he's got a dog, got a lovely dog. Um, seems like a nice, a nice local man, you know. Nothing, yeah. nothing seems problematic about him. He just loves a bit of meat. He loves making, trying to make the best barbecue in Texas, and he brings out many a slice of it later on. He's, uh, oh yeah, he's all over it, offering it up to anyone for free. Yeah, I'll do want some, a bit of this? Do some of this wicked barbecue I've got. Yeah, oh, he loves yeah. his barbecue. I mean, it does look tempting. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, definitely made me old tummy rumble. While I was watching that, apart from yeah, despite the fact it's quite a disgusting film, there's a lot of disgusting, gloopy, um, bodily fluids and various things on show. It's this easy the, to the, get some put of the wet, the, some of the wettest zombie shooting ever committed to <laughs> film in this movie. Everything's so wet in this film. It's, it's absolutely something, and, yeah, and splashy. Um, when the bullet, but, when the bullets start flying, uh, yeah. it is is sopping. Yeah, it's sopping. Uh, Sopping wet zombies, ring them out. But you um, couldn't, you couldn't like. There is a moment though when when um, El Rey does. I think he slices one of the zombies' throats, and a big old geyser, 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 geyser. Of, <laughs> geyser oh God, geyser of goop like flies yeah, towards him, and he has a, a bit like, of goop. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's sort of goop. ducks and he's, he's great. Back. That's one of my favourite scenes in the movie. Him just stabbing people up in the hospital, but. Right now he arrives at the barbecue shack and um, is he runs in and meets um, and meets Cherry who is Cherry, there having yeah. quit a job and fallen in the bins. Fallen in the bins. I properly hurt her leg as well. Like she's had a bit of shrapnel or something like stabbed right in there. Yeah. No. No leg luck. At all. Bit, bit of glass yeah. on the bit. I mean, this is a grubby time. People aren't recycling properly in this town. No, definitely not. Blue, that, hasn't, uh, that hasn't been separated. Brown glass, green glass, clear glass, all together. All right. Madness. No what's the difference? The world's falling Which, apart. What's the difference in those glass types? What beverage tastes the best out of each glass type? Um, green bottle. I don't know. Is the best an apple ties out of a green? <laughs> Classic, nice and fizzy, delicious. Yeah, good. Um, brown bottle, little craft ale from a brown bottle. Oh, well, craft ale. Well, like, what else comes in a brown bottle? Medicine. Yeah, yeah medicine. Exclusively <laughs> medicine. Exclusively medicine. What are you drinking there? A uh, lovely craft ale? Nah, but oh, medicine. Alcohol, mate. A little bit yeah. of medicine. Just having a little Le- medicine here. And then uh, your, your clear glass bottle. I mean, Coke, obviously, holidays are coming. Coca-Cola, full fat Coke from a gla- clear glass bottle, only as a treat. You only as a treat. Christmas Eve, yeah. Enjoy responsibly, guys. Come on, yeah. there's a sugar tax for a reason. Of course, and your teeth will go furry if you eat too much, drink too much of Coca-Cola. Yeah. It's true. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. So she she's in there, and he goes in. So they have a history together, and she talks about how she's leaving town to become a stand-up comedian, even though she's definitely not funny. She is pretty funny. She does some good she jokes. She's pretty funny, yeah. She's got, good, she's got some good one-liners. She knows how funny she is, but she plays it down a little it's bit. That's part, part of her shtick. 
so they've got a history, but El Rey has got a bit of a history as well, right? He's former soldier, possibly. Right. Yeah, we come to his history a little bit later on. It's very mysterious right now. No one seems to want him in town. He's a bit of like the of the phantom stranger, but he's picked um he's picked up um he's picked up Cherry in there. They're going, they're going somewhere else there. Meanwhile, back at the hospital, we've already met um our characters here and they're going, they're going to work. Um, you know, he hopes that there's gonna be no problems. Uh, on this day, but unfortunately, there are some problems. There are some problems straight away. The people in the town are clearly being infected by the gas, and someone has got horrible tongue disease. They've got um, rice crispy, like rice crispy squares for tongues. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is Dr. William Block, uh, played by Josh Brolin, and his wife Dakota, they work in very close proximity, you know, um, I yeah. can only imagine what working with your significant other would be like. Um, I imagine it could be, I'm sure it's lovely for the most part, but you know, if there's any level of disruption to that relationship, taking it into work, taking also, your work home. The other, the other way around, what are you going to talk about? How was your, how was work today? Yeah, fine, you were there though, so. It was fine, you were there. What'd what did you do? What did you, what'd you get up to last night? Well, we watched that fucking. We watched that shit film. You know, you were there. You chose it. Yeah, just that's the, the last time you're cooking. Just, just those those experiences that like you share all those experiences. Let's to let's to let's to fill fill the other one in on. You know, you're experiencing all the same things. A little bit of space. It's probably why the relationship's going so bad, and she's texting someone on the side saying, "Yeah, I mean, I think he knows." So the relationship is going a bit south and there is a connection between a character we see just before, Fergalicious. Yeah. She's been texting Dakota. Um, and yeah, so Dakota's unhappy. She's unfaithful. Unfaithful. And she, well, obviously someone has been texting her saying, check out these lovely lady lumps. And she says, <laughs> well, if you she's insist. Not, I absolutely can't resist. It's only two years after you released the song my humps and I've been I've had it on repeat ever since so I'd love to see I'd love to check them out if anything yeah. she um, has a so, feeling that tonight's going to be a good night but she's incorrect because tonight is quite a harrowing <laughs> night for a number of reasons yeah especially for her so Dakota as well is like a an anesthetist anesthetist oh I can't even read this word anesthetist it says here anesthetist oh anesthesiologist but anesthesiologist there we go thank you andy so she's dead good at anesthetics another word anesthetics yeah. it doesn't sound like a real word to me now she's dead good at it she also makes a bit of like a theater she's got a little rhyme uh yeah, different got... color different colored jabs yeah because the man is poorly he's gonna have to have his arm off because it's it's gotten poorly um, yeah so he, he's been bitten and it's all bubbly and goopy and yuck He's dipped it in the batter and he's going to have to get it sorted. And this guy's like, oh, I don't want you to chop me arm off. She comes in, as I say, do a bit of theatre. He goes, right, this one. Yeah, I'll show you how good my friends were. So this one just takes the sting off. Um, by the time I get to this one, you won't be able to feel anything. And once I use my red-headed friend here, you'll never see me again. And she like, John Cena's away. <laughs> she just fades to, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's true, though. It works as well as she says it does. Yeah, because that guy is Sparko. Yeah, he's gone. Um, Meaning that Josh Brolin and co can effectively remove his arm safe and sound. Um, yeah. But yeah, like, again, a lot of this early stage here is just things that we're setting up for a bit later, right? The next thing we do, of course, is we go back out to the road and Fergie, Froggy, Fergalicious are out, is out there um, continuing along with her car um, when... She gets into an accident and is trying to flag people down with limited success, only to be set upon by um, some, some, some horrid zombie types. Some horrid zombie types. And they drag her off the road and like devour her. But again, lots of goo and liquid and blood and all flying all over the place is... Uh... At least she's hydrated, I guess. Is that how it works? I don't know. You don't have to say my mother. You're, just, you're just full of water. Just add a big, add a big old glass of water so you're full <laughs> of the stuff. 
You had um, an Andy Conduit Turner sized squash. Yeah, well, that, that's the big jug of water that JT gives her at the um, at thing. She was, he probably thought it was for the engine, but actually, she was just guzzling it all she down. She was guzzling it. She was so thirsty. <laughs> Got a right truth on. Yeah. So she, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, so yeah, she's uh, she's does it all down, and um, we very quickly, I guess, get back to the. Um, actually, no. It, it we Ch- Cherry and El Ray drive past, don't they? They drive. Um, they drive. They drive past, and they basically El Ray is talking about how it's very. <laughs> I know it isn't a Tarantino movie, but it's very. Tarantino heavy, isn't it? You know, a bit like the the Kill Bill bit where he talks about Superman and his clothes. It's that kind of aside, or you know, what hamburgers are what quarter pounders are called in in France. It's like, oh, if you see a deer in the road, the only choice is to to hit it head on and knock it away from because if you break or if you swerve, then you're dead. Yeah, and then immediately runs it. You can't. He swerves to avoid. Fergie getting eaten on the road, um, and Rose McGowan is hauled on out by the by the zombies. Um, but thankfully, he's got a, a night vision rifle in the uh, in the car. Jesus Christ! Like a proper terrifying rifle. But also, how scary does the zombies look at night vision? They are they look awful, scary motherfuckers. Um, yeah, so he manages to stop the zombies who are attacking Cherry. He shoots them, but they run off. But not before. They tear off pull the Cherry's leg off. Yeah. right leg. Is it the same leg she hurt earlier? It's just bad luck. Bad leg leg luck. Yeah, bad leg. Bad luck comes in threes, and she loses a peg in a bit later, later on as well. So yeah, she's had a leg pulled off. Um, mm-hmm. And I guess they must also pick up bits of Fergie as well because this is where things all begin to come together. So we go back to the hospital. And the bodies and the injured are being brought in. It's clearly a busy night because aside from these incidents that we've seen, there are people coming in from all over, either sick with um, what you and I then know to be the zombie infection. You've got a, you got a battery tongue or a bit of use a bit blistery or <laughs> people who've just been actively smashed up. But, um, but Dr. Block takes a look at particularly he notices um, Fergie's body and has a glimmer of recognition. So sends for his wife, shows her yeah. that, um, that Fergie is, is, is So it's obviously dead. Dakota's lover and she's yeah. had her brain hollowed out. She's got no brain. Oh, left. yeah. No eating. brainer eaten out of her. Oh, yeah, he does say it's a no brainer. Her brain's been eaten out of her head, uh, which obviously is a good, good line. Um, so, yeah, is this... So not long after that is when Block basically attacks Dakota as well, almost yeah. like that realization that he was she was going to run away with Fergie. Yeah, um, she come, he comes in. He says, "Let's have a look at your phone. I want to see the messages on your phone." She goes, "All right, Jeremy, Carl, fuck off. You're not looking at the messages on my phone." Um, so he does <laughs> her own her own trick to her, and oh, yeah. he grabs her anesthetic needles and basically paralyzes her hands and like. It's quite an effective scene, like a hand seizes up and it opens, so he's able to take a phone, see that the messages that match up together are the same, confirming the affair, and it's implied that he's probably going to kill her there. Yeah, because he puts her in a cupboard, doesn't he? Like, locks yeah, because he's, he's, about, he's about to kill her, but then uh, a kind of Adam Driver-esque, uh, but not Adam Driver. Um <laughs> yeah. Adam Driver looking uh, like EMT comes in and basically says, oh, you've got to come and see this. It's a right old mess out here. Uh, so he shoves her in the cupboard and leaves her while he while he goes off to off to explore and look at, you know, look yeah. at the more patients that are coming. So in. was it loads, loads of bodies that had been brought in earlier after like a car accident had have got up and walked, to, walked That's out right. of the morgue. They've, they've well, gone. So basically some of the bodies that they find have wandered off, leaving like a trail of gore behind them. Lovely. Um, um, so then we get to... The, 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 literally, this film, what, like, it's, what, an hour and... an hour and 40, but it goes at quite a pace. Yeah, like it does. Because now we're back and we meet the... 
we meet the sheriff, like JT's noticed some people are hanging outside that, you know, some roustabouts are hanging out outside his uh, his barbecue shack. That, uh, so he phones his brother, the sheriff. Yeah. Um, they have some, you know, they have some banter about the, you know, we get like just this little bit of a dynamic between the family, like, she phones the sheriff saying, I'm not phoning my brother now, I'm phoning the I'm phoning the sheriff people hanging outside my shop. Um, and he goes, Well, I'll tell you what, give me that recipe. And he's like, Oh, I shan't, shan't ever give you the recipe. This is, <laughs> shan't ever give us- <laughs> this is my recipe. And he goes, Well, I'm just gonna raise your rent even higher until you can't afford to stay there then. So there's obviously like this dynamic yeah. and this feud between the between the brothers, which is just nice. So I guess colour uh, for the for the movie, right? Yeah, definitely. These nice little interactions between certain characters definitely helps and has more effect when certain characters start to die as well. You're a bit like looking for the instant reaction of a certain character who's perhaps got a relationship or a connection to them. Um, it's a, Yeah, it's effective for an over-the-top B-movie. Um, so, obviously, Cherry gets taken to hospital with her leg off, um, but around about that time is when El Rey gets detained by the sheriff yeah based on so so apparently obviously the sheriff is angry that he had the rifle he yeah, had like, he said you're not, like a dangerous you're not supposed rifle. to have guns like that <laughs> yeah you're not supposed to have guns like that in the town and they've obviously got a bit of a past connection yeah. as well either he doesn't trust him certainly he's not a fan no um and around about this point as well el ray has been detained by sheriff Hague, and he's got to um deputies i guess so deputy tolo who's played by tom savini obviously the famous uh, prosthetic makeup artist actor i guess as well stunt performer um you recognize him if you watch other robert rodriguez movies because he's in dust of dawn as well all of them uh, yeah. all of them is he in all of them just about i think he's he's a very regular collaborator well, certainly and also i think if you don't know tom savini by appearance you would know his work very quickly if you see it because we're about to see an awful lot of it i imagine yeah um, there's a lot a lot of his effects in this movie as well yeah this is one of low-key my favorite bits of dialogue from in the entire movie this tom savini thing where he comes in complaining about having his, his oh god <laughs> Like someone's yeah. bitten my finger off and the sheriff is like, oh, do you want a plastic? Because I'm not using colourful language for dramatic effect, Sheriff. He's literally bitten my finger <laughs> He's off. He's literally bitten my finger off and the sheriff and I think the other deputy are a bit like, oh, not affected by it. And then what ensues here is what can only be described as a hilarious series of gags where, <laughs> where Tom Savini is trying to get his wedding ring to put back on his severed finger and obviously the zombies attack the um the just outside the police station outside right? the There's police a... station yeah um and then one honestly i i laughed out loud at this at one particular moment um obviously the zombies start attacking um el rey is still cuffed they're getting shot by the sheriff and his deputies there's a moment where one zombie like grabs tom savini like sort of spins him and slings him against the car <laughs> And the car yeah. like folds in on itself. It's, it's so it's, over it's the top. Him around before you know it, cars start exploding. This is like an absolutely <laughs> insane action scene. My favorite Tom Savini moment is when he's realized that he gets his wedding ring back. Um, the person who's passing it to him gets like jumped on and shammed yeah. up in front of his eyes when he gets his wedding ring back and then realises he doesn't have a finger to put it on anymore. <laughs> he goes so to he, put it on the severed finger, and then, like, he's, like, a bit gone. put out. Rather than, like, devastated, he's, like, a bit put out that his finger's gone. So, so he puts he, it on a different one. He puts it on his middle finger, and then does what I could only describe as magnum punches. So he basically yeah. holds his yeah. big, big revolver in his fist, and then he pulls the trigger as he's punching. As he punches. Oh, that's great. Yeah. There's, a, there's a couple of interesting bits of gunplay in this film as well. That was one of them. Which I enjoyed. There's a bit a bit later as well, which we'll mention. Um, but yeah, this bit is over the top and ridiculous. And El Rey, does he just he comes out and helps and gets out? Yeah, he, 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 out? he comes out. He get he shoots through the leg shackles while he's fighting some zombies. But the sheriff isn't keen to give him a an actual weapon. But they've decided that he's going. Like El Rey points out that I'm going back to. Um, I'm going back to get Cherry from the hospital. Uh, the sheriff goes, right, well, you're not driving. You're not driving. I'll go in my car. 
Uh, yeah. His car then explodes and goes, I'll, I'll ride with you. <laughs> yeah. I suppose um, I'll ride with you then. Um, yeah, and, and off they go, and off they go to the hospital. And again, things just continue to accelerate on at a rate of knots. There are occasional asides, like we go back to JD at the um, at the at the barbecue place, and you see that the zombie folks are looking inside now, and they're coming, they're coming closer to go in. Um, but you know, it's it's a really really brief stop, or anything that we do that's a side here, we. Um, it's very, very, very quick. Um, yeah. So it's, obviously, oh, Ray gets. Sorry, gone. Yeah. Yeah. As I said, it's it's very, very quick. But then they go back to the hospital for before they arrive, as we see them coming along. I would say possibly the best, like the worst, like like one of the best effective scenes in the movie. But honestly, the bit I had to look away from it is so effective, but so brutal. So um, Dr. Block is about to look for his about to look for his wife in the um, in the hospital to finish her off now that he's now that he's free. Yeah. Um, oh no, but he gets he gets oozed before that. Um, yeah. So basically, yes. zombies are basically running amok to to a degree. Not fully in the hospital, but now he goes in to look for where his wife was, and um, the the room is empty. Someone is eating someone else in there. Yeah, so she jumped. The she jumped out the window, didn't she? Yeah, uh, you see her blitz herself out of the window in comedic, like throwing herself down into the bins again. But he gets basically his glasses chopped off with a bone saw before it gets unplugged. But then the zombie gives up on bone saw and him and just goes, I'm just gonna wipe ooze in your face. And he's oh, immediately yeah. a wrong gun after that. <laughs> immediately um, a wrong gun. He, he, he looks a bit disgusted, but then it's like, ooh, like the, quite like nice, the flavor, actually. like the flavor of this. That might it's be quite delicious. Um, Love it. Dakota throws herself out the window and then goes to open the car. And this is yeah. the bit, this is brutal. Her hands are paralyzed from being injected with anesthetic so she's trying to basically open the door with the keys into the and a hand in like a into like the strange like hooked handle and then her heel breaks and she falls over and like snaps the hand yeah. it's so rough it is seriously rough in the yeah i was uh i was not a fan i was not uh, a fan I mean, I it's like, great Ouch. it's great but i was like oh! she obviously she obviously <laughs> can't feel it though yeah yeah, that's true. Which is, Silver which is one benefit. That. You know, she's going to feel it in the morning, but, you know. Um, yeah, hand's broken, but she escapes in the car just as the sheriff and uh, Ray arrive. Um, the sheriff is not going to give Ray a gun, so this is where he just grabs his couple of, uh, I think, butterfly knives that come in those handles that you flip around. Yeah, I guess, like, butterfly knives slash... I don't know. Yeah, I guess you I would think they're butterfly it. knives. I'm not gonna Google butterfly knife. I'll get put on the list, but because um, <laughs> they're the kind of knives you definitely have just for threatening slash stabbing people, right? There's not like a, a butterfly knife is great for going fishing. It's it's the same reason as the only it's the only reason you sell baseball bats in this country when no one plays baseball as well. Like baseball bats in the UK yeah. are just for bashing people, right? <laughs> Just for bashing people in the crust. Yeah, That's just for it. bashing people or like having in case of burglars. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so this is quite effective, obviously, of El Ray tearing through all the zombies with his uh, butterfly knives, slicing this limbs is great. and throats. He does, a, and... He, does a, he does a wall run. He does a wall run. It's like he's enjoying it a bit too much, though. Like I the Prince of Blum in Persia out there. He's, he's wall running. <laughs> he's stabbing people up. He's absolutely loving life there. I feel like it's very, very impressive there. I'm, I'm impressed yeah, it's by. Good. So impressed go, by everything he's got going on. He go, he goes through there. He finds Cherry, who's very sad that her leg has been cut off, but is like, it's no use crying over. It's no use crying over spilled milk. And she goes, like, he has literally no, no sympathy. <laughs> she's lost her leg, but he's like, get up, and she's like, are you serious? Like, I've got. A missing leg. He's like, nah. I'll break a table leg off and shove that on his stump. And you can have a peg leg. And she goes, so you could have just carried me. He goes, no, nah, that's never gonna happen. 
Yes, no, no, thank you. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, so, that, you know, and this is all, again, while all of this, we, I, this is one of those films, I think, we do a great job. I think one of the, one of our listeners posted and said, sometimes we can describe these things. It's like having an audio book of the film. On this occasion, I don't think I can do it justice because it is such a crowded scene of so many things that are happening. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the guys are running through the hospital to get out there. She has a peg leg. There are crowds of people running and screaming. He's stabbing people as they as they go. Um, at least her with the peg leg kind of feels realistic to a degree. Yeah, as as, as ridiculous well. as it is, she can't walk very well. It's not like they just stick the peg leg, peg leg on her and she's absolutely fine. Back to her best. She is pretty much screwed. Um, but yeah, it makes the best of a bad situation, I guess. Yeah. So she goes along. They they are escaping. The sheriff he assumes has taken people back to um, JT's, which he said he's going to go to next. Meanwhile, Dakota gets home and throws her babysitters out because uh, they're, they're babysitter twins. Looking at her. The babysitter twins. Yeah, and she says, "Right, we're leaving. Let's get out of here." Uh, and bless him, little Tony. He wants to take his pet turtle, his pet scorpion, and his pet tarantula, sticks them all in the same tank and says, they'll be all right. Yeah, they won't, Tony, you idiot. Fool. They won't, mate. You absolute fool. I'm really sorry to say, but they're going to murder each other. Which one, do you think right. could, which one do you think could win? Depends how potent that sting is on the scorpion. And it's a scorpion that a little boy is allowed to have as a pet and handle. That's so true. Maybe not too bad. That tarantula. Let's go, for let's go for turtle. Sort of defense. Turtles. Wait him yeah. out. <laughs> Wait him out. But also, like, maybe just roll old over, age. crush the little soft body of the tarantula. Yeah. <coughs> he'll, let, he'll, he'll let them fight. It'll be, it'll be a whole Godzilla thing. Be like, let yeah, them don't fight. fight in the tank. We haven't got time for this. And then he'll, um, then he'll, then he'll finish. Then he'll finish them off. Then he'll finish off the winner. As they're um, leaving, though, the babysitter twins who were rudely kicked out because they complain about um, being having stuff to do, having stuff to do, they attack the car like crazy, crazy twins, crazy babysitter twins, attack the car, smash it up. Yeah. So there's, there's a, there's a bit not going after where they're forced to be allies, and I'm like, no, I can, I don't yeah. know if I can forget that. Thank God for that missing. Thank God for that missing real basic. They're insane. Um, the others all arrive at JT's barbecue place. JT is pretending to be dead, just lying on the floor, covered in sausages and barbecue sauce. Doesn't he say, what does he say? Is he pretending to be dead or did he like pass out? I he, think goes, he, oh, fought... he says, oh, I must have passed out naked. after I fought those guys. I'm like, you get that I fought sometimes. those guys and I was like, bloody hell, I'm knackered, I've got to lie down. When you're the tired. The dog has eaten the sausages from his torso. Yeah, and, and if it, it looks they like assume it's eaten. his guts. <laughs> yeah, and he just gives the oh, thank goodness! Like, Do you want a sausage? And he passes it to Rain. He's like, oh, delicious sausage! Well done. Lovely. Um, T- top top class sausage. So they all take refuge, including Cherry and El Ray, at the Bone Shack. Um, and I think so. Dakota, with her son, she goes to her dad. Earl McGraw, who we mentioned before, played by Michael Parks. Um, and they're like estranged, like they kind of hate each other. But she doesn't he like, say, I told you not to come here or something like that? But, yeah, but before that happens, Rory goes in there to her dad's house. This is where um, she says, Right, I'm going to go knock on the door. If you see anyone come to the window, oh, shit. you shoot. Yeah. You shoot. <laughs> this is I completely brutal. forgot. It's this like, is if so you see, brutal. If you see anyone come to the window, you shoot. What if it's dad? especially if it's dad but be careful don't point the gun don't mess around with the gun because you will shoot your face off she is three steps from the car before that boy has shot his own face off i was confused for a second i was like did he do it did someone else do it but he did it right in in my book maybe the dad did do it but in my book he the little boy just shot his own face off and she's carrying around like a like a clearly a dummy of the kid well, and like fighting off the zombies but i was like whoa this, this is dark spoilers did he watch the post credit scene then so the post credit scene isn't there a moment where tony's like it is alive it's just there him playing with his turtle and his tarantula and his scorpion on the beach so, so maybe was... this this bit was like a, a anesthesia induced fever dream 
Yeah, he just got better from shooting his face off. I'd be all right, just walk it off, mate. You'll be yeah. fine. She needs to rest for a bit. But yeah, he's he gets blasted in the face. Uh, her husband, Dr. Block, is back again there. He does the eat your brains and gain your knowledge thing. Um, but she's able to run inside. And her dad, he was like, oh, I thought I told you never, to, I never wanted to see you again. Um, they say a strange, he, he lets her in. Um, yeah. And, you know, cl- closes the door. Um, and we're very quickly about to avoid any need to tie these things together. Basically, back at the bone shack, Sherry and Ray reconcile their relationship. He actually bought her an engagement ring, which had been in the coat that she took when she, oh, yeah, she left him jacket. beforehand. So they um, get on with some lovely makeup sex. Um, unlike last week's person, much more appropriate place to have sex. I mean, not ideal. It's someone, <laughs> else, it's someone else's yeah. bed in an emergency situation. Well... You know, but you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You think definitely more appropriate than in the kitchen in your open plan house when you've got several children. Um, Far so more appropriate. Yeah, they do I that. Agree. But then we see the effect of the screen burnout, or we have a missing reel. So effectively, the film has very skillfully avoided lots of exposition um, and probably about forty minutes of content um, by fast forwarding. At this point, the sheriff having said earlier on the film, like, none of you shoot yourselves, none of you shoot each other, but most importantly, none of you shoot me, has been shot yeah. by one of his own men. Um, so okay. he, he, has been, he has been shot, but all of a sudden, he didn't like Ray to begin with, but then it's like, oh, I didn't know you were L Ray. So yeah, I'm that one, I don't like to talk about it. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't like to talk about it. So now he loves L Ray. Um, Loads of other characters just arrive as like survivors. So Dakota and her dad and the babysitter twins, all of them just rock up and everyone's yeah. at, everyone's at the bone shack now. Everyone's at the bone shack. And everyone's... the plan is to flee to the Mexican border. I think El Rey says something like fight with our backs to the ocean. Get your backs to the sea, fight anyone that comes near us and live yeah. our lives, build our own place. That's kind of the that's kind of the plan. I'm not really sure what happens here because Cherry just goes out and gets the car, somehow manages to drive, even though she definitely needs two legs for it, manages to drive over a like table leg leg um, and brings this vehicle back, smashes it, <laughs> but bulldozer smashes it through the uh, the restaurant, the, the sort of barbecue place. But I thought, well, you've fucked the car, but no, it's fine. Apparently. No, it's fine. Um, so they get that, they get all the vehicles away, and this is one of this is such a surreal bit. So they all get in a vehicle and they see if anyone else has a car. Dakota has a car that's like at the end of the drive. So they drive themselves on there. Everyone gets in cars to get there, and then El Ray yeah. gets out and the oh little mini, God, there's a little yeah. mini bike in the back. If he's is... getting a car to get there, how does he can he not just stay in the car? He says, is it fast? I mean, there's no way... I know this, this film is obviously very stylized, and some things that perhaps look silly can look cool. This does not look This does not look cool. I just think, Jesus, that's just dangerous because he's yeah. driving along on this tiny little bike and yeah. shooting things. He looks He looks silly, it's, very it's silly. Big, it's big leprechaun energy, like when the leprechaun got on that bike and he was pedaling yeah. along. He's in a tiny little bike. Um, like those big giant men in the Michael Jackson um, Moonwalker video. Yeah. Um, the whole film, he's, he's on there. Um, and he's he's rattling along. They are basically mowing their way through all the zombies. For some reason that I couldn't comprehend, the dog looks like he's getting out of the car, but then immediately gets run over by a different yeah. car. It was a really strange cut. I'm like, well, it was strange. I only really knew what happened because JT like called out, in no. distress. No, my dog. Also, Why? we forgot. We forgot Why to mention he pretty much has perfected the barbecue sauce recipe by realizing it's his blood that seems to be added to it that, that makes right. it taste good. I mean, that you can't mass produce that. Yeah, bleed you out. Um, but yeah, he's he's noticed that that's it. But his brother, the sheriff, points out because you've got your blood in it. But what else are you going to do? And later he does have a rebel. Like, oh, blood is salty. It just it just needs salt. Yeah. Um, Just a little bit of salt. Don't worry about it. They get to they get to a big bridge and say, "Have we got enough 
ammo, to which the answer is, no, you do not. Um, but then army dudes turn up, kill all the zombies, but but bash them. Um, and they've been, yeah. they've been captured. The grouper have been all sealed away in, in prison, like in prison. Did by the you military. enjoy the fact that there's a guy who's also imprisoned playing saxophone, playing the, the, the essentially the soundtrack to this film, like the, the sort of sleazy saxophone tones that are kind of in films like this. He's playing it live. Yeah, he's got, he's got it. He's playing it live from, live from in prison. I tell you what, Ben, as we're talking about music, did you notice that El Rey gets the Deputy Dewey sting almost every yeah. day? Yeah. Do, 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 every I, I was, time he does anything. After I was watching it, I was humming that and I was thinking, why am I humming that? And I realised it was something similar that was being used in this. Yeah. Um, the Deputy Dewey sting. Yeah, he gets, he gets the Deputy Dewey sting many a time in this Deputy movie. Dewey's entrance music. Yeah. Um, we get... Uh, rapey quentin tarantino not in real life where we get that's literally his character in the cast list is the rapist the rapist um, yeah um so yeah i mean he gets some very schlocky dialogue perhaps some dialogue he wrote himself who knows oh with but, his like do you want to say do you want to say fuck me fuck you right now is it no, yeah not, yeah not, not, not just give me a fuck me look this is yeah. quite good though i kind of like that even though Quentin Tarantino is playing an absolute sleazeball. Um, I do like how Cherry deals with him, and you kind of think it's just going to be a throwaway scene, but no, the character remains in it for a little bit longer. He goes back to to um, a room where the guys are watching a movie called Women in Cages. Women in Cages, and he's going <laughs> so, to he's going to like he's he's taken basically Cherry and Dakota down to the separate cell. He's going to assault them, but she gives him a chair leg in the eye. Yeah, so uh, what happens? Does she just, she fight, she punches him and then chair legs him in the eye, doesn't she? And then yeah, chair legs him a, in the eye, but his mask's it, been off too long, so he starts to get all blistery. He starts to get all blistery, starts to mutate, starts to turn into a horrible, big, swollen testicle of a man. It turns into a big old sack of pus. Talking of testicles as well, um, Abby from the first scene didn't die. He's also been captured. And it's weird because his role kind of reverses here. He's kind of thought of as a bit of a hero to the piece. He's the salt, he's the scientist who seems to have some there's some possibility of a cure because some of the population, i.e., everyone who survived so far, all of our heroes are immune. Seems to be immune. Yeah, which is handy. Um, but yeah, like basically they so the our scientist here at Abby and um and El Rey are taken to talk to Bruce Willis, who kind of explains that he and his team killed Bin Laden, but are now fucked up forever, which is why he wanted the the stuff. But then in saying this, not forced by anyone, he takes his mask off and turns into a big um yeah, a big Mars, yeah. a big, a big battered Mars bar, and they, oh, but, they so shoot him. When he explains he killed Bin Laden, he does kind of explain that they weren't even there to get Bin Laden. He kind of just rounded a corner. Bin Laden was there, so he killed him. Yeah, uh, um, and and then he and then he mutates and they they kill him and then they go and it resolves the scene where Tarantino is now mutating as well. Uh, Al Ray and Abby turn up. They fight them together. They they kill. <laughs> Tarantino, whose dick was melting off, and he's like, "Right, I better be quick." And they go, "Right, you're the worst." So be, <laughs> his um, dick is literally melting off into horrible, long globules. Yeah, um, dropping off like two strings. Dakota realizes her hands have regained their feelings, so she's got like a syringe launcher that she uses now to fire at like another soldier, which is a, a nice little sub weapon yeah. she's got going on there. Needles, needles him a couple of times. Needles um, to say, no. <laughs> Needles to say, she uh, fucks she him up. Last, she had the last laugh. She had the last laugh. El Rey and Cher El Rey and um, Abby come to, I say rescue them, I don't think they needed rescuing. Forgot to mention how they got out of their cell as well. So obviously they all shot the guards, but 
talking of another interesting bit of gunplay, El Rey like goes to pass his weapon over it and then immediate oh, while yeah. it's up upside down, <laughs> immediately shoots it. Um, but unfortunately, JT gets shot around about this point as well. Yeah. So now both of the the both the sheriff and his barbecue loving brother have both been have both been shot. Uh, the team reunited, everyone goes up to the top, they begin their escape. Abby gets his head split into bits. Um, like oh, yeah, that was completely out of nowhere, wasn't it? They're like, it seemed like he was kind of gauging the situation, looking at, on the lookout for a way to escape, and he pokes over in a corner, and his head just gets split <laughs> in half. I guess yeah. by someone, we, we don't really see who shoots him either. Someone it? sniping, I guess. But um, yeah, they, they, so, they head out there, they've already gone out there, they've like, um, at this point, Rose McGowan, Cherry has been given a gun leg as they, as the team reunite. Um, El Rey has made her a gun leg from somewhere. So she attaches this and then she's the most deadly weapon in film and can slide around on the oily floors shooting. shooting this is obviously like zombies. an iconic, iconic look, but also an iconic moment. It is super, super over the top. And I guess similar to those exploitation movies of the of the era they're sort of replic- replicating um yeah it looks badass and even though at the start of the show we said how does she pull the trigger we don't really need to know do we just tense your leg he's, he's obviously El Rey is a skilled a skilled creator he's, he's worked out how this happens yeah so oh yeah exactly um, so what's next so that that happens, we basically have a, a huge action scene, which would be insanity to try and describe. We've got people shooting people, we've got people shooting people, the survivors all running for a the survivors all running for a helicopter. There is a rocket that is fired that Cherry like shows that she can do that thing where you arch your back. She does that to basically the rocket fire under her. Yes, because um, she does mention that she's got dozens of um useless talents useless talents but you know all talents talents in themselves she says about go-go dancing that's a talent yeah. says about uh being able to do the crab great talent the fact that she can still do it she's very uh nimble on her foot and yeah. and gun so it's like a high-powered machine gun but also uh like grenade launcher, grenade as well. launcher. she does some grenades to keep things keep things going. Herself along. um Lots of other people have been got at these things. Like Tom Savini has been made into pieces as they were leaving the as they were leaving the restaurant before all this happened. Yeah, so many people have been got in fantastic and gory ways, um, and also lots of the zombie folk have been shot to death in gory ways. And we now get to that that everyone gets into the helicopter the strip. The strip club owner can fly a helicopter. He takes Luckily, off yeah, and uh, yeah, he takes off, and then basically the zombies that are running towards them start running away. They use the rotor blades of the helicopter, brain dead style, to chop the ones <laughs> yeah. um, to chop the ones that are fought, that they're chasing after to bits, and then they head they head to escape. Dakota goes to the other helicopter to be confronted by zombie Doctor Block. Um, who? How does he? How does he meet his end? Oh, her dad, also her dad, another yeah, person who so- survived. Earl McGraw survived, um, shoots him. Doesn't he say something like, I never did like him? Yeah, like, didn't like him anyway, piece of shit. Um, so they have been, so they they do that, they fly away, but unfortunately in the final battle, Rose McGowan, Cherry is still on the floor. She is saved at the last minute by a, a final, there's a final surviving zombie that's going to shoot her. El Rey turns up and shoots, shoots him, but he himself... Yeah. Um, meets his. He gets end. shot, doesn't he? Yeah. So yeah, he, he shoots a zombie, and the, zomb- the zombie happens to have a machine gun, shoots him in the chest. He's dying, um, and Cherry just kind of has that final embrace of him, doesn't she? She says, oh. them. He says oh, this, "You said it was going to be the two of us." He touches her tummy suggestively and says, "It still is going to be the two of us. I never miss." Um, <laughs> 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 and, it's a, and it's a call back to something he's done later when, mean, he's, when he's covering her when she's running to get the thing he says i'll cover you don't worry i never miss yeah um and it's just it's an, an example case. of that throwback dialogue and it's done very deliberately very tongue-in-cheek i you can say it's slot schlocky you can say that it's on the nose fucking love mm. it i think it's very yeah. like 
when it's done in ten, like it's it's a very rare thing. If it was done earnestly with the idea that you think this is just genuinely good and cool, yeah. then it's bad. Yes. If you're doing this saying this is good and cool because it's funny, it's very yeah. good. It's yeah, very yeah. well. It's, it's incredibly done. It's incredibly done. Yeah, I, I belly laughed um, at that moment, and I belly laughed a few times as well. So I think that's always good. And I was laughing with the movie and with its um, ridiculous gags rather yeah, than the, at the, it. The, the, the same bit as when when Cherry is fighting Tarantino and she stamps on his eye with the chair leg and it snaps off and he goes when El Rey comes in he goes oh you broke my leg so I'm like very good <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> um, fantastic um, and then they escape and then it kind of flashes forward how far into the <laughs> says, does it say how long it was no, it just the, it does it's just the future. It's very end of Terminator style. She's like a Sarah yeah. Connor coach. She's like, oh, I now meet the lost people. I guide them. We live our own lives. She has a daughter that's strapped to her chest. Um, and messiah. Then just, she looks a bit like a messiah figure, doesn't yeah, she? Yeah, just she's wearing a white dress. <laughs> white dress, uh, daughter strapped to her chest. And then it reveals she's upgraded her weapon using bo- whatever bonus points she got from killing all the zombies with the minigun. Uh, sorry, with the... Uh, machine gun she's now got a mini gun a mini gun leg it's probably a wider base for her to stand on as well it's when she's walking yeah, exactly there we go um and then as you mentioned there is a post credit scene with tony uh dakota's son seemingly al- well i say seemingly al- alive alive with his turtle scorpion and tarantula um good times yeah and, and that and, is that and that one I, I feel like in this one we've maybe versus some episodes we've rattled through some of the things but effectively this film like we don't have so much story to unpack effectively this movie is a 90 minute action scene with with some with some one liners in it the very mm. it's very deliberate in the fact that the big bits of exposition that isn't just incidental dialogue is in the missing reel um, yeah. that it's not important that we see for this movie to work. It's effectively a huge action set piece. Yeah, um, with exactly. some with some cool uh, Rodriguez dialogue across it. Yeah, uh, yeah, and that is that is that for Planet Terror with Luke's absence. I know at the start of the episode we said he might drop in. Don't look like he's going to be here, but you know that's fine. Oh, I hope he's not. You can stand us up if you want. Ah, oh, I hope so too. I'm sure he's not. But anyway, um, we're going to have to soldier on with name game without him. I understand we've got some. I've got name three. Game, right? Planet Terror is a hard one to do. Um, but you know, <laughs> I, I've been doing some obscure ones the last couple of weeks. And do you have a couple as well, Ben? Yeah, but I can't remember exactly how I'm going to do this. So I don't know. Like, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. So my first one is um, a a terrible uh, green gas is released and causes a very scary zombie outbreak, but it happens not in a large city uh, in Texas where barbecue is found, but in a, in a small rural alternative name for a village, one that's particularly famous for the mild cigars they manufacture and sell. Oh, God. Jesus. I feel like it's similar to something I was going to go for, but I because I've got that word in my head, I can't think of the other one. Go on. I only changed one word in this one, if that helps. The word you've changed is terror, yeah? No, no. It is no! Terror. It's in a small village that has mild cigars. <sighs> what are they called? I can't remember. You're going to have to hit me with it. Hamlet Terror. Oh, that's it! Called. Hamlet! A small village... <laughs> The small village bit threw me because I was thinking, no. There we um, go. The next one I have for you is um, uh, a green noxious gas is escaped uh, and it transforms. It does go worldwide. In this case, there is no there is no cure, and it turns everyone across the entire globe into uh, an entrepreneur and investor. Um, Famous for you know not not donating money to Levi Roots. <laughs> what? 
Uh, so someone for Dragon's Den, right? Yep. Um, Duncan Bannatyne. No. <laughs> it's not Planet Duncan Bannatyne. Planet Deborah Meaden. <laughs> Planet Deborah, correct. Is it, oh, is it Planet Deborah? Yeah, Planet Deborah. Um, wow. And next, pig sick of her, of her husband's antics and the further adventures of Hercules, um, the, uh, the Greek queen of the gods um, takes over all of, all of Earth, making it a planet of her own. Planet Athena? Oh, no. no, not that one. Not, well, I, well, I think planet Xena. What am I doing? Oh, it's almost like who's the. Oh, Do you know what I'm doing? I'm thinking about mine at the same time as you're doing yours because it's the two of us. My yeah, brain is. But you're trying to work out your own. Um, in this example, it's Planet Hera. Oh, Jesus Christ. What's wrong with me? I think it's because Deborah threw me off because I was like, is that. Kind of, it kind of sounds like terror. Who knows yeah, what you're doing with the it? Closest I Words find. have lost all meaning. Yeah, it's, and I'm it's sorry. Been it's been a long time. I was, week, do, I was doing one of, those, one of those things. You know, sometimes when you're trying to listen, but you're also thinking, I've got to say something in a minute, and I oh hope God, I don't fuck oh it God, up. God, I'm not prepared. <laughs> That's what I was doing there. That's what happens when there's three of us. Sometimes you can have those little quiet moments. Where yeah, you, you can have a moment because there's three. Yeah, you can do oh, it. Exactly. That's okay. Yeah. We, I think we've kept the energy high enough to spark back being tired. Uh, yes, just missing uh, so much. <laughs> so mine are an experimental bioweapon of green gas is released into um, the land. Rather than the earth, the land, r- r- into the land, it turns everyone in, makes everybody start to speak French and use the French word for land, which is sometimes used to describe environmental factors that affect a crop's phenotype. And it tear? Oh, very close. There's, I mean, the tear is French for land, but this word is just particularly used to describe things when you may talk about the crops like coffee tobacco i think wine as well you describe the the land as the do i know this french word have you, <laughs> have you checked my uh, french vocabulary i think i only knew it because i uh, i worked for like an alcohol company and you had to mention it when describing wine it's the terroir uh, uh, planet yeah, Planet Terroir. <laughs> no, I can't even say it. De, like <laughs> de Terre was the first thing. I mean, could have said it goes into the earth and impacts all the potatoes. Planet de Terre. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, definitely not an easy one by any any stretch. This one probably not over. Uh, so yeah, bioweapon green gas is released, turning everybody into um, terrifying large white birds with yellowish heads. Black tipped wings and long bills. They're the largest seabirds in the North Atlantic. Their wingspans are up to two meters. <laughs> it may also be a word that you would use to describe someone with a large appetite. Oh, thank goodness. Gannet terror. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, yes, seabirds. You got it. Albatross. You got it. <laughs> Bloody albatross is the biggest one. No, but, but uh, Gannet is the. Gannets what gave it away. Those are guzzly yeah. gannets. Initially, when I was looking for the word gannet, I searched word for a greedy, greedy guts. Um, but when I, when I searched it, the first thing that came up was the birds. So I thought maybe, you know, maybe I'm not sure how, how big into uh, what's the study of birds called? Ornithology. Ornithology, man. Words have lost all meaning. Ornithology was merely a concept seconds ago. Um, there we go. We've done it. We've done a Done a bloody success. game. All we gotta do now Much is rate success. the film. Um, rate the film. I'll go straight in there. I think it's a good time. It is utterly ridiculous. Very, very silly. Don't take it so seriously. Enjoy it for what it is, and you'll have a good time. I would probably give this a B. Maybe yeah. a maybe I'll say okay, a flat B. I was gonna say B minus, but I enjoyed it and I did watch Death Proof as well, which is a completely different experience. But I think alongside it, it kind of does amp up the the things about Planet Terror, which you can enjoy, especially when there are crossovers of characters, for example. So yeah, I go for a B. Yeah. I I enjoy this a lot, and there's very little to necessarily 
mark this down on. I think unabashedly when I watched this first as a early 20s um, fool, perhaps, I might have gone, oh, best film ever, <laughs> simple, yeah, A plus, all the, like, oh, God. Sometimes I think that's how I felt. I, I think that's how it felt when I had the poster on my wall. I was like, this is the greatest film ever made. Yeah, um, people don't, people just don't understand it. it's doing too much for a minute. Like, yeah. I remember back to, it's the same as when you see those Facebook posts from the past. So remember when you said this 10 years ago? It's that area of thing, oh God, no, maybe I was awful. Did I? Oh no. Oh, no, was I awful in the late, was I, was I awful like those many years ago? Um, but no, even, even then, I don't think this, like, as much as there's not a lot of things to hate in this because the the action is fantastic there's some very sharp dialogue at the same time it is what it is in the fact that it's a it's a it's a parody piece it's a mm. it's an it's an homage to certain things there's not much substance of its own apart from the core joke of what it is right and the core thing about it like this is not a movie that you're going to take away an important message from and it's a joke it's a joke that never gets old as well you know yeah. you're not you don't get to a point where you say right i've had a guts full of this now finish up wrap it well, up it's not guts will it's be good. splashing out those very splashy zombies exactly um, so i still i still like it a lot I, I i think now you know maybe because i'm a couple of years into watching the best and worst horror films and talking about them um you know the bar has changed a little bit this is deeply, deeply enjoyable still, and I would still absolutely give this a, a B plus. Uh, it's a great, it's a oh, great, wow. in, it's okay. a great, in, it's a great enjoyable movie. It doesn't mm, have that. If if what you're looking for is something deep and meaningful, it's like, you know what? Maybe you'll have a good time. Maybe you'll also learn a little thing. You're not gonna learn. <laughs> Maybe you'll learn a bit, a little yeah, something yeah, along yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps you'll learn a little bit something more watching a Zack Snyder movie, even which is, of course, that sometimes a zombie can be a robot. But um, <laughs> like, you're not gonna learn anything watching this. But you have a lovely time not learning anything. It's great. And it's yeah, so maybe it'll make so maybe it'll make, maybe it make you slightly more stupid as well which is you know we could all do with a little bit of that when you got all the brain cells knocking about in my head yeah kill a few of them yeah joking, get, get fergie get a no-brainer get your brain slurped out by yeah, a no-brainer by a zombie there we but go yeah, then great great enjoyable stuff i'd certainly recommend watching it absolutely acceptable to to watch in the background because do not need to pay yeah. that much close attention it is loud and you will keep up and watch Death Proof as well, even if you don't watch it as a double bill, like uh, as Grindhouse was supposed to be viewed, definitely check it out because um, it's also good. Very, very, very different. But Even if you watch it 15 years later, like I'm about to. <laughs> yeah, 15 years later, don't worry about it. it. Even in 15 years from now, on its 30th anniversary, watch it. Why not? Get on, get on and watch it. Get on it. Okay, next week we're going to be watching and reviewing paranormal activity with returning guest georgie broad that'll be fun looking forward to that uh, yeah. so there we go that is it number one in the bag number one yeah. in the can um thanks very much for listening if you enjoyed the show become a patron over at patreon.com forward slash horror hangout thanks very much to our patrons currently including patron against his will john crinnan ben scaife Stephen Christopher, Laura Kendrick, Toby Miller, Scott Rigby, Lane Spencer, Ollie Child, Wendy Miller, and Pazuzu. Thanks very much for your support, everybody. We really appreciate it. Thanks to Kovach Cowman for our theme music. Thanks to ACAS for hosting the show. Please consider giving us a rating or review. Head over to the Facebook group Horror Hangout Board of Advisors to do so. Yeah. Um, no, no, not the rating the reviews. That is, join us rate at the reviews. Facebook group. Yeah. Go and rate and review on a, on your podcast apps podcast wherever you app like. Of choice, and then I know podcast. This is standard. This is the like, share, and subscribe of, of podcasting versus YouTube, right? But really helps people find the show. Um, whack a rating wherever you can. Um, yeah, you uh, can write a quick review. Write a particularly funny or compelling one. I'll read that shit out. It's fine. Only if it's a five star review, obviously. Um, if it's four not stars. A not a monster. You immediately go on the trash heap. Yeah. But um, yeah, like, check, check those in there. Sometimes those platforms go ahead and forget the ratings that you've done as well there. So 
have a look and if stars aren't appearing next to your name then chuck us on some more it won't cost you out um yeah. and then apart from that um yeah have a lovely week everyone Enjoy yeah yourself. thanks very much for listening everybody we will catch you next time uh obviously and again thanks to andy for being a right horror dude and to you too ben and luke wherever you are luke wherever you be out in the ether hopefully tucked up tight fast asleep with a belly full of lovely food pancake day warm... today day of recording that you've had lots of lovely pancakes luke fluffy pancakes be, different be, toppings uh, I'd actually be okay with it, you know, if Luke hadn't been stuck doing lots of horrible work this evening and actually he just wanted not to come because he wanted to eat so many pancakes. If that is the truth, Luke, I ain't mad. It's all right. Yeah. Enjoy your pancakes. Enjoy your pancakes. Uh, enjoy <laughs> Pancake Day. And tomorrow will be... So if t- yeah, today's Pancake Day. Tomorrow will be Ash... <laughs> Ash when? Is that true? <laughs> Choked on that. I, 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 I... <laughs> Isn't it like, isn't it after you've, after you've had your pancakes, that means if you're religious, then that Lent, no pancakes for you for 40 days. No. Or, or, no, or a whole year, which is how most people do it. They go, that's it, I'm done with pancakes now for a year. I'll wait until next Shrove Tuesday. <laughs> well, Digress. Pan- well, pancakes tomorrow. Not out of disrespect for the Lord, just because it would be, it would be weird just to pick and choose <laughs> things that well, I want. Well, I'm- well, I'm going to do it out of disrespect for the Lord. All right? <laughs> <laughs> right. On that yeah, note. I'll get you. Right. See you later, everybody. Bye for now.